Good morning on a Tuesday. Uh, I'm meteorologist Rod Hills. We get you prepared. We're now hours away from a two o'clock start time in Portland for an ice warning for freezing rain. Now down in the South Valley, Albany, your warning begins at 11 and of course keeping a close eye on the ranges of possibility is uh, Chris McGinnis. Good morning. Yeah, so let's go ahead and walk through kind of the updated time frame of when these warnings kick in real quick. We can zoom on over here to our computer screen and show you the ice storm warning covers the entire area in that bright pink shading from Skamania County all the way down to Lane County. So the, the heart of our viewing area up and down the I-5 corridor. Uh, the Southern Valley, so this is Lynn, Lane, Benton counties, uh, Corvallis to Eugene, Albany, 11 a.m. is when that start time means. So basically as early as 11 a.m., we could start to see some light freezing rain develop in that part of our viewing areas. We shift north uh, for the central and northern Willamette Valley. So this includes Salem, the Portland, Vancouver metro area, Troutdale, Hillsborough, etc. cetera. Uh, that kicks in at 2 o'clock, as Rod mentioned, 2 p.m. until as late as 4 a.m. Wednesday. And then last but not least, as we go out into the Columbia River Gorge, uh, that warning kicks in at 4 p.m. today. So that's kind of the updated timeline on when the warnings go into effect. Rod's got kind of more on, uh, you know, the here and now, where we stand now, yeah. and walking us through future casts to see yeah. uh, the anticipated arrival of that freezing rain. Well, nice and clear this morning, wasn't it? Things are changing. The clouds take, have come in. Take a look at the <laughs> big monitor. <laughs> uh, Jay, walk over to the big monitor there. And we've got the clouds over our camera. It's still the family vineyard state. That is sleet and snow on the ground from the weekend. And uh, that's going to be covered in a glaze of ice as we progress through the day. We're also seeing clouds over Lincoln State. Now, a quick reminder that the coast is just rain this time. Just rain. Chris already took you through the warning map. It is snow with the winter weather advisory. About the time you get in the gorge to the Dalles. And then snow up in the Cascades, although reasonably there's some icing all the way up to snow level, which is about 5,000 feet a little bit later today. So as we go through the afternoon, much of Oregon up into Washington looking for some measurable wintry precipitation. Southwestern corner of Oregon, you can see the moisture coming in now with a little bit of rain uh, moving up into the uh, Bandon area. And again, just rain at the coast. Now here's where we are. Can't be rain. If it started right now, it would be something, right? It would be ice because look at the temperatures. After being down as low as 13 this morning, Forest Grove is currently 18. So here's the problem. Cold Arctic air still in place. All of our modeling suggests that this is a, a solid warming aloft, which means all raindrops until the moisture strikes and makes impact with surfaces. Then it glazes into a sheet of ice and that would be freezing rain. But you can see on the temperatures, we are nowhere near freezing. And with clouds now coming in, that's going to cap the warming to some extent. So it heightens the probability this will be a significant freezing rain event as we roll through the afternoon and into the evening the hours. It was 10 below on Baker City this morning. Good grief. Big, re big reservoir <laughs> of cold. The, the, uh, the freezer door is open yeah. through the gorge. One degree out there. And here's uh, the first model we're going to show you, the Futurecast graph model we typically show you. And again, the salmon color. This is all freezing rain shooting up. So again, Albany, Chris mentioned 11 o'clock start time for the warning two o'clock from Salem into Portland could be freezing rain before two o'clock I feel like in Salem and once it starts we talked about this yesterday the second you get freezing rain it gets bad in a hurry much more quickly in my opinion than kind of a snowstorm where you watch it kind of stack up and you go well it's getting deep things are getting bad now this will get bad really quickly moving up late afternoon if not before up into Clark County and parts of a Callis County there is a sign on our modeling that up in Longview it could be a bit of a mix with temperatures around freezing today so rain slash freezing rain depending on exact location and then Still looks like this evening, here we are somewhere around the midnight hours, we get a south wind racing up the valley. That potentially around midnight warms you folks in Marion County and Lynn counties above freezing. And then you're done. You'll just stay rain the rest of the night. But take a look at this. Chris mentioned the weather service verbiage for Portland ends the winter storm warning, their current timing at 4 a.m., but not so fast. This is 9 o'clock in the morning, and I believe this has a good chance of being true. This is still a freezing temp in Portland with freezing rain accumulation. And then that freezing rain, maybe even lingering longer in the morning hours once you get east of 205. At 1030 in the morning, here it is still in the gorge. But is this freezing rain at 1030 all the way into Gresham and Troutdale and Washougal and Camas? Maybe. 
You folks that are long timers out there in East County, you know how this goes. We tell you it's going to warm up at a certain hour. It never happens until hours after we say it. So we'll just wait and see and, and prepare for the fact that this could be extended icing in parts of East Clark and Multnomah counties into the gorge during the day while the rest of us see rapid warmings. And this is actually heavier rain coming in during the afternoon hours. But here's the gorge, still a mix of ice and then snow out into the Dalles and eventually during the day tomorrow, everything will quickly get back to normal. I think Chris is going to take you through this map in just a second, a little bit more, but this is showing you ice accumulations, and, and Chris is going to come back to that and touch on that. I think this is the money map because we know moisture is coming in. We know it's going to be freezing rain. Well, the second you get above 32, it's just rain and your storm is over. So we'll call this the money map. And I think this particular model has a pretty good handle on things. This is 7 p.m. this evening. This is freezing rain in Eugene, Corvallis, Salem. There's Longview with maybe that mix, depending on exact location up in Cowlitz County. Let me play it we're right now. We're just after midnight. Here's the warming, and it's impressive. Eugene 42, Salem 36, rain. Your storm is over. Corvallis, we talked about this yesterday. Sets in that cold pocket. Uh, off of the coast range, so maybe freezing rain a little bit longer. But there's Portland, still freezing rain. Hood River, 15. Here's the morning hours. Salem, how do you do? Rain in 45, while Portland is still suffering from freezing rain, ice accumulation, and 31, and maybe even quite a bit colder out in Gresham and areas closer to the gorge. Now, this model does at some point tomorrow, probably before the noon hour, rapidly warm up the heart of the North Valley in Portland, and there's Longview at 36. It does warm up Hood River at 34. That may not be accurate. There could still be colder temperatures in the gorge even at that time. And again, we're not sure, as I mentioned, exactly when the warming is going to take place east of 205. Those gorge winds are still blowing today, 40 to 45 miles per hour out of the gorge. So yeah, that's locking down cold weather. Here are the temperatures this afternoon statewide. Again, we talked about the ice in the gorge turning the snow in the Dalles. We talked about a mix, well, maybe we didn't, a mixture of snow and sleep with one to two inches accumulations in Central Oregon, if you're watching us from over in Madras and Bend and Sun River, and then just straight snow picking up in the afternoon out farther to the east. Notice Timberline's at 29 degrees, and if you look at the snow levels, it's 5,000 feet. So I think even up to government camp, it's, it's at least possible that there could be a mix of some icing uh, up into that area. And then, and then the real quick headline is certainly on Thursday, we're back to a normal pattern with uh, the valley above freezing at night, daytime highs in the 40s, and just some rain. Um, and now we want to start picking Chris's brain about the, the ice potential or, or anything else that you want to break well, out. You so. mentioned the, you know, when, when do we get above freezing, right? Because we go from rain to freezing rain or from freezing rain to rain, right? Once we get that south wind and temperature yeah. above freezing. So let's go ahead and bring up the, the wind modeling because we're still under a wind oh. advisory, by the way, in the east, yeah. uh, in, you know, in the metro area until 10 o'clock. Uh, this is at 8 o'clock. So you're looking at future cast. And wind gusts are still out of the gorge. And to Rod's point, like even down to Salem at 8 o'clock, we still have that north wind, right? But as I roll the clock through the overnight, look at that. Coinciding with that warm up, this is overnight. Yeah. 2 o'clock in the morning, Salem goes to a south wind. It's just like that. We start scouring out the cold. But Portland and Troutdale and through the gorge, the, the freezer door is still open. And so this is what Chris is talking about. Look at this. South wind, whoop, perpendicular switch, east wind. South wind warm, east wind cold. I mean, that's about as definite defined line as you would possibly get on. So that lane, puts the, the, the very <laughs> slow, well, you know, when we're here in Salem or we're here in Portland watching Salem thaw out and, and they're dealing with just plain rain, mm. uh, the freezing rain line will be, will seem tantalizingly close. Yes. But the east wind will just keep holding on. And here we are at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, remember, the ice storm warning expires at least at this point for Portland at 4 a.m. tomorrow. But to your point, there's Maybe the east said. wind, you yeah. know, out at Troutdale. So at least, you know, the east side of town is, is still, you know, going to be one of the last holdouts until finally in the afternoon uh, we will celebrate that south wind switch. And that should, you know, warm us up and, and make everything <laughs> great, Better, right? Better, yes. <laughs> Better, yes. Uh, snow in the Cascades at the, at the Cascade Ski Resort, so this will be good for them. But getting there, as you mentioned, would be, you know, kind of a challenge tonight and tomorrow with the ice. And then real quick, here's the, the uh, what'd you call it? The money model? The money model. The, the money the model. The, uh, the Oh, the, yeah, the temperatures and then the, yeah. and then the, uh, and then the ice accumulation potential. Yeah. This is the um, ice, okay. You know, if we get three tenths of an inch of ice with 20 or 30 mile an hour winds in Portland, yeah. that could be, you know, bringing down more power lines. We still have thousands yeah. of people without power. Uh, Portland Bureau of Transportation as of, um, 10 o'clock this morning still has dozens of roads closed, primarily in the West Hills because of down trees and power lines. So this is obviously, you know, another 
what are we, eight, 18, 18 hours or so of 18 to 24 hours of kind of, oh man, let's get out of this and then, yeah. uh, and then finally we will. But Look that's the latest projection for the graph model in terms of ice accumulations. And, and it's got the bullseye out in obviously yeah. in the gorge, but you know, a third of an inch of ice is still a lot in Portland and, and Gresham and Troutdale. And notice how the, the modeling picks up on the cold air lasting longer. The bullseye, and Chris just mentioned this, so the highest, go ahead and zero back in on that, uh, Jay. On the on the uh, on the model. notice how the the bullseye the numbers are largest here in that east what I call the east wind blast zone out of the gorge 0 0.37 0 0.37 0 0.37 0 0.63 0 0.45 in Stevenson so here's the modeling picking up on freezing rain longer in duration and therefore the ice accumulation numbers are a little bit higher I noticed uh, our chief meteorologist Matt Safino when he was writing about this last evening uh, did make mention that there could be a half an inch to as much as an inch of ice accumulation in some of the hardest hit areas and, and I would have to say that's at least a possibility out in East Multnomah Clark County and into the gorge because you know, the modeling is still Actually, I didn't look at the 12Z numbers coming in at four this morning, but the model is more showing a good half of an inch or more of, of possible liquid precipitation to deal with. Yeah, you still have, as we mentioned off the top, that reservoir of cold air, and as long as the wind is blowing east through the gorge, you're still tapping into that at the lowest levels yeah. of the atmosphere. So, you know, the lowest thousand right. feet or so can be below freezing, and that's all it takes really to keep the freezing rain machine going. But a quarter of an inch of ice, Serious, right, Chris? Just that much I mean, ice you start, you start seeing issues as, as uh, you get between a quarter and a half an inch. You can start bringing down tree limbs and, and more power lines, et cetera. I mean, I, hopefully we snapped off the <laughs> weakest ones this past yes, weekend. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if we start laying, in, laying down a half an inch ice, that's going to be a different story. So hopefully this is, you know, those are the max numbers that we see. But... Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see how fast we warm up. Back to the, there you go, there's the money, there's the money map. So if you're just joining us, to me, this is the money map because, you know, we, we know this. It's all rain coming down. So as long as you're freezing, it's an ice storm. The second you get up to 33, 34 degrees, it's not an ice storm, it's just rain. So if you want timing, and obviously these are models and we, you know, they have a chance to be exactly right, but they can also be off. But let's play the game that this is exactly right, okay? Here we are at 7.15 this evening. All ice, Eugene, Corvallis, Salem, Portland. Kind of a mix back and forth of rain and freezing rain up in Longview where it's just above freezing and, and you're north of the cold outflow and the models are showing there's a little warm pocket up there. But just focusing on the I-5 corridor right here, okay? Let me play the clock into shortly after midnight, 12.15. Now it's just rain, storm's over, Eugene. Now it's just rain, storm's over, Salem, 36. You'll continue to go up into the morning. Little cold pocket lingers down in Oregon State. Still freezing rain in Portland, 29. Freezing rain in the gorge, Hood River, 15. Let's go in tomorrow morning at 715. Here we go. Still freezing rain, Portland, 31. 45 in Salem, you're outside in short sleeve shirts, maybe <laughs> with an umbrella. <laughs> or maybe you're just letting the rain hit you in the face it's because Hawaiian you're so happy day. at that point. Yeah. Still a cold pocket in Oregon State. That's interesting. I say Oregon State, Corvallis, 31. And then look at Eugene, almost busting 50. And of course, the coast is just going to be rain. There's still like a 50. This is tomorrow morning. Remember overnight tonight, there's south winds. And Chris showed you this. There's south winds bringing that warm air advection. South wind runs into a wall as it hits the east wind blowing into uh, Multnomah County and parts of Clackamas County and Clark County. So let's go ahead and play one more tick. Now, you know, later in the day, it shows everybody warms until you get well into the gorge past the Hood River Valley into the Dallas at 25. But it is this area from Hood River all the way into the east, uh, the east uh, metro areas, when I'm saying east of 205, where it's hard to pinpoint when the warming is going to take place. And if you folks have lived there for a long time, you know that. You know, often it doesn't warm until after your forecaster says it's going to. So that's kind of a wait and see game. But I think everything else on this temperature projection I really like and has a chance to almost be exactly spot on. Chris. Interesting that some districts, by the way, also kind of already announced a late opening for, for Wednesday. That might be, um, you know, I think top of mind for folks, at least in the northern Willamette Valley, Clark County and the Gorge for, for tomorrow. Obviously, a lot of schools, almost all schools closed today in advance yeah. of what will probably be freezing rain and ice on the ground in what would normally be that commute home from school. Yeah. Um, so you got to think a good call on that. But tomorrow morning is, is still a little like, you know, we still have to see it happen, right? Um, so I think for folks wondering about that, that's, you know, kind of let, let's see how fast we clear out. Let's see how fast we warm up. Um, but if that 40 something degrees in, in Salem at uh, seven o'clock tomorrow morning comes to fruition, then 
uh, you know, as you mentioned, the ice storm is over for them. It might take another hour or two before the road conditions really improve significantly. I was going to ask you that. You, you think that that's your best guess, that one to two hour of, to get the ice melted off of the main roadways once it starts to Yeah, I mean, up? we've been so cold, right? I mean, you've got temperatures in the single digit, well, teens anyway, in the valley. So it's, it's going to take... You know, it's, it, as soon as the temperature hits 32, it's probably, you know, another hour yeah. or two after that. But, you know, shortly thereafter. And keep um, in mind, rapid warming down in uh, Salem and south of Eugene. And, and the so, beach I mean, that's this go around. Kind of uh, for anyone watching at the coast, um, you know, the coastal passes could be a little icy, obviously. Um, and especially on the east slopes of those coastal passes. But the west side of the, the coastal passes and, and the beach will be just all rain, which I'm sure they're, they're thankful yeah. for that. So. Yeah. We do think, don't we, that this is it for now? We don't see anything else just, on the forecast I just, Somebody asked me that, and I looked at the GFS, which goes out now to February 1st, and there's no sign of, like, another Arctic intrusion, at least. So that gets us through January. Are you sure? Isn't this saw, enough? I saw you looking at that model with your eyes closed, just wishing I, there was nothing else out You were the one calling for the ice storm. <laughs> so when we actually get this ice storm, you know, he called for it back in October. So it's... This is, this is the guy right there. For the time being, we do think this ends this, uh, this particular Arctic uh, air that will moderate out of it. And, and as Chris mentioned, the models Come on, Groundhog. First, so, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you using KGW as your weather source. We always say that. We mean it sincerely. Um, Chief, Meteorologist Matt, Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino will be here starting at 4 this afternoon. Of course, we'll have the update on the new news coming up. But really, Matt's show is going to be in the middle of uh, starting to get, we think, bad icing reports at that time at 4 o'clock. Yeah, and I think that's just kind of in summary, like with that 2 o'clock start time in the valley, 2 o'clock down in Salem, as you mentioned, we could have yeah. ice on the roads in Salem. And not too long after that, here in Portland is when we think that freezing rain threat develops right here in the Portland Vancouver metro area. So you still have, you know, maybe a couple hours to get some stuff done, but best to not be on the roads once that ice starts forming because as soon as it first drops hit the road, each drop is turning into a little icy patch. So Absolutely. So I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. This is Good luck. me, Chris McGinnis. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.